Welcome to the Peace on Earth program. I am your host, Merlis Hughes, bringing you hope and comfort in God's Word and that we will be led by His Holy Spirit to have direction in this program that will be helpful to us. When I'm talking about stormy seas today, facing them, I thought that sometimes when we face storms in our lives, God gives us some encouraging scriptures. Isaiah 43 verse 2 says, When you face strong seas, I will be with thee to, de to deliver you with endurance and calm. You will not be engulfed in raging rivers. If it seems like you're walking through fire with flames licking at your limbs, keep going, you won't be burned. Wow, so you can go through raging rivers. He said, he's going to be there with endurance and calm and protect us from the raging rivers, even though it might feel like we're walking through fire with flames licking at our limbs. But the, the, the lesson there is keep going. Don't look back. You won't be burned. Now that's not to say that that doesn't happen. We've seen from forest fires and a lot of um, tragedies around the world by flood, by fire, people losing their homes, people losing their lives. So that does happen. And we just have to believe that God is sovereign over life, sovereign over death, and he can protect you. He is our protection, and we can call upon his name, and he says he'll answer us, but we may not always get the answer or the result that we like. We just have to blindly trust him and tr take him at his word, that he is in control of the stormy seas. Now, Psalm 50, verse 3 said, Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire, around him a mighty tempest. Yes, God is the power to deliver and save us from the storms and bring us peace and calm. When it rages as if we are filled with fear in flames, we're encouraged to keep going that we will not be burned equally. Psalm 107 reveals God's mighty and saving power to deliver, but acknowledges that ships can sink and lives be lost also. He's in control. So let's praise the Lord at all times. Remember the Titanic, the supposedly unsinkable ship. I'm sure there were Christians on board and a variety of people of different faiths and different beliefs on that terrible journey. The rich were there and the poor, but they didn't have enough lifeboats it was supposed to be the unsinkable ship, and I think it's, it sank in a total of something like 22 minutes. I didn't get all the, the, the numbers that out of all the people that were on the ship, there was just very few that actually lived. And uh, the captain went down, you know, with the ship. And there's many other, the L L L Luthatania and many other disasters that came came about at sea and the, the bottom of the ocean. So um, he can also, like Jonah, who was taken up by the whale, we say, but it was a large fish. A lot of people think it was the whale, and, uh, and, but, uh, but he was thrown out by this people on the boat because uh, they, they said that we're gonna draw lots who's bringing us all this bad luck, and it was Jonah because um, he was supposed to have a, a, a destination that he was supposed to go and deliver a message in Nineveh that in 30 days Nineveh, Nineveh would be destroyed and he wanted to go back to where he came from, from Tarshish. So he was actually vomited out where he was supposed to be on the dry land to deliver that message. And though at the time they were delivered temporarily by fasting and prayer and going in sackcloth and ashes. 
but about 120 years later, they still hadn't changed. Uh, they were a, a very heartless people and uh, very cruel, and uh, God did judge them, and now Nineveh is just uh, a, a byword, really. And Psalm 107, verses 23 to 31, in the New Living Translation says, Some went off to sea in ships, plying the trade routes of the world. They too observed the Lord's power in action, his impressive works on the deepest seas. He spoke and the winds rose, stirring up the waves. Their ships were tossed to the heavens and plunged again to the depths. The sailors cringed in terror. They reeled and staggered like drunkards, and they were at their wits' end. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He calmed the storm to a whisper and stilled the waves. What a blessing was that stillness was as he brought them safely to the harbor. Let them praise the Lord for his great love, for the wonderful things he has done for them. There's a wonderful hymn I used to sing by Phil Coulter. Gosh, I'm afraid to even try with my croaky voice <clears throat> to sing this hymn, but it's actually the naval hymn in, the Indi in Indianapolis in America and uh, at Portsmouth in England. And uh, some of the verses, I just read the two of the verses. Uh, and gosh, I'm so sorry that I can't remember the tune exactly. Eternal Father, strong to save, whose arm has bound the restless wave, who bids the mighty ocean deep, his own appointed limits keep. Oh, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. Verse 6. O oh, Trinity of love and power, our brethren shield in danger's hour from rock and tempest, fire and foe. Protect them wheresoe'er they go that evermore shall rise to thee glad praise from air and land and sea. The point I want to emphasize here is that God is to be praised as he is the so sovereign and control, as I've said before, of whatever the circumstances that we, or whether we live or we die or we suffer or we drown. And I mentioned the Titanic earlier, the supposedly un unsinkable ship. Uh, I have a, just a few facts that I wrote down here that on April the 15th in 1912 in the North Atlantic on a voyage from Southampton to New York City, when they struck an iceberg, 2,224 people were on board. There were not enough lifeboats, as we mentioned earlier, and when the ship sank, 1,635 died, including the captain, and only 706 people survived. Wow. More urgently was uh, the USS Indianapolis. It sunk on July 30th in 1945. They were torpedoed by a Japanese submarine, sinking within minutes in shark-infested waters. There were 1,196 men on board. 316 sailors were pulled from the ship, of which 150 died from shark attacks. The captain, Charles McVeigh, survived upon retirement, and in 1949 he was made a rear admiral. And the chaplain, Tom Conway, Conway was, uh, was his name, was a hero and lost his life trying to save a sailor and died as, as the shark attacked both himself and the sailor. And there was a film that you can see if you're interested in that subject. It's called Man of Courage. And it was made in 2016 with uh, Nicolas Cage. So anyway, um, 
the topic of the seas and the stormy seas in our lives. And now I'm going to go to the picture because I kind of have a turbulent sea here in this picture. And it might interest you to know that I, I didn't use any brushes in this painting except for making a, a precise, this is called um, seascape in moonlight. And as I made that circle, that was the only time I actually was using a brush because I, 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 to get this technique, I was using liquid forms in its liquidated paint, uh, form of paint. I was putting chemicals together like floaterol and water and, and a paint retarder and moving the things around when they were in the fluid form to try and create the effects that I did of, of, of the ocean and the motion of the ocean. <laughs> and, um, and then I used uh, some very fine points here to make it something much more interesting than I could get with a brush. And that was that I was using a, sort of like a, a skew tip that you would use when you're um, making shish kebab. It has a very fine point. And I cut those uh, things in half and I was able to use this, these parts to actually push and make, a, 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 make some kind of bubble type things to make it more interesting. And the, and the fine lines here, I got through moving around with that, that little stick that I told you about that gives me a finer point than the brushes. And this, of course, you know, moving, moving, moving the paints around and everything. So it's a different technique you know, used in what they call pour painting, P-O-U-R, not P-O-O-R. <laughs> Although sometimes when I, I spend so much money on all the paints, I really do feel it's a pour painting. <laughs> so anyway, um, so as a, I'll try and get some areas enlarged for you to see here as um, we can see the detail now of the rage. I, whenever I think of the seas, I always think of my dad because he was the sailor and I, I'll never forget one storm, and I could have even told you that story before, but I, I was supposed to have a, a life, I had, a, I had, I had my, uh, I think I had my slickers on, you know, which were like oil slickers to, uh, for the rain, but I didn't put a lifeline around my, my, uh, my um, waist. I was about 13 at the time, yeah, about 12, 13, and, uh, I was the crew, along with my uh, favorite cousin, Jay, <laughs> always in some trouble or other with each other, with my dad. <laughs> and uh, I fell overboard. And it was such a terrible storm that he could not have turned around and, and uh, tried to get me. He had the helm, uh, and he was steering it from his left hand. And then he just went down and grabbed me by my neck and my hair, <laughs> pulled me out and saved my life. But so I know what it's like to be in stormy seas and to be rescued, in this case, by my dad, you know. And, um, and that there were many storms that we were through because he was a very, very um, courageous and very adventuresome man. And um, so um, anyway... I, 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 I regard when I think about those days, especially when we, we sailed in Sweden, we had a 26 foot uh, Swedish folk boat and it could comfortably sleep about three, sometimes four to squeeze. And, um, uh, and I can say that it had a fixed keel. So I was always the one on the lookout to check the depth so that we didn't go on the rocks. And um, so, uh, you know, it, 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 I, I always think of those times as very, very happy times. Dad spent the whole of one summer, he bought a kit because he was going to make me my own sailboat. <laughs> and, uh, and he even had the, the British Navy to celebrate the event. And he was checking the leaks. He hadn't got all the plugs up. And of course, when we went down, and they christened the boat. Of course, it was called Morillis after after me. Well, it was started sinking. Well, he had to take it out, and then he had to fix all the places where they had to make it waterproof and sealed. But it was a, a it was a rowboat, and it was also a sailboat. 
And I remember that great labor of love and that whole summer long that he spent making that ship. I think my sister told me he started making it when we were living, uh, you know, actually in Gothenburg, and then he finished it. As she says, according to her, if he finished it in uh, Stenningsund, this little island where you could only get to with a... Um, there was no br uh, there was no bridge there. You could only cross it with a uh, um, really like a, a a motorboat or something. You know, transporting you from one to the other. And the island had no cars. You either had to walk or you went with the donkey cart, and that was it. But they were the happiest uh, times. I think I remember my child. We did bring the boat to Chesapeake Bay, and we also s sailed at Cape May, but. Uh, it was not as fun as sailing in um, Sweden, in the Swedish fjords, going up to Norway, all these wonderful little islands. And uh, then um, I also got my own boat, a Watkins sailboat. And uh, we will not talk about the demise of the, of, of, <laughs> of the, the Watkins when it turned over in a storm and I lost my mast. And that's another story. Another tale, which I'll tell on another program about the seas, so you get the idea about the waves and the te and the and the and the, the way that the the, the um, effect of the turbulence was created, you know, artistically. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed this program because I'm going to go on making a lot of sea pictures because I I just love it in any form. I just find uh, it very fascinating in terms of light and movement and color. And uh, so I'll be doing other seascapes. You haven't heard the last or seen the last of them yet. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, program. And I've certainly enjoyed my time with you to make this program. And I would just like to um, say a little prayer as we focus on uh, the, the God of the storm in our lives to protect us and guide us and keep us. Heavenly Father, I just uh, thank you that you've uh, given us, in the face of the storms of life, even that wonderful hymn that uh, by Phil Coulter, where it calls out to eternal Father strong to save, whose arm has bound the restless wave who bids the mighty ocean deep its own appointed limits keep. Oh, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. Now, it could be other people who are in peril. It could be ourselves who are in peril. But we could be in the storms of life. We may not necessarily be on the ocean, but we're on the oceans of life. And we're going through some storms. We're going through financial storms and maybe... Uh, emotional storms, physical storms, uh, loneliness, um, maybe it's a, a sickness, maybe whatever the problem is, joblessness, storms in our lives. But the same person that we come to is our eternal Father through his Son, Jesus Christ, who can, loves us and can rescue us and deliver us and take us from the, 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 the miry pit and put us onto dry land, and put our foot upon the rock of ages so that we can stand on the eternal one who is able to save us from drowning, save us from falling, save us from fear. Save us, O oh Lord, and know that you have strong and everlasting arms because the eternal God is thy refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms, arms to save you, arms to keep you, arms to love you, arms to lift you. I pray that for everyone listening to my voice and joining me in this prayer today. And I pray that God will mightily bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. This is Marillis Hughes saying thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this program, please remember to click the like button and subscribe so you'll be reminded of my next video. Thank you.